In this lecture, we will study orthogonal signals. I will first define orthogonality, then we will understand what do we mean by orthogonal signals. Orthogonality is the property that allows transmission of more than one signal over a common channel with successful detection. So there are three things in orthogonality. The first one is transmission of more than one signal. We are transmitting multiple signals. Second thing is a common channel. We are transmitting more than one signal over a common channel. And the last thing is successful detection. So we are transmitting multiple signals over a common channel and at the receiver's end we are successfully detecting the transmitted signals. So these three conditions must be satisfied in case of orthogonality. Let's talk about orthogonal signals. Two signals are said to be orthogonal if they are mutually independent. So if we have two signals and they do not interfere with each other, they are mutually independent, then we say these two signals are orthogonal signals. And we can transmit these two signals using the one common channel and we can successfully detect these signals at the receiver's end. So this is the definition of orthogonal signal but we are more interested in finding out whether two signals are orthogonal or not. And for this purpose, we require some set of rules. And before moving to this set of rules, we will first try to understand what are orthogonal vectors. Orthogonal vectors. Let's say the first vector is vector A. And the second vector is vector B and the angle between vector A and vector B is theta. Now we will find out projection of vector A on vector B. We will find out projection of vector A on vector B. You can understand projection as shadow of vector A on vector B and it is represented by vector A subscript B and magnitude of projection is mod A subscript B. And from here you can see the magnitude of projection is simply equal to magnitude of vector A cos theta. So mod A subscript B is equal to magnitude of vector A cos theta. And if we multiply the magnitude of projection and the magnitude of vector B, it will not be equal to zero. If we multiply the simple multiplication, the magnitude of projection and the magnitude of vector B, it is not equal to zero, right? And magnitude of projection is magnitude of vector A cos theta and it is multiplied with magnitude of vector B, which is not equal to zero. Now we will rearrange the left hand side. We have magnitude of vector A, magnitude of vector B cos theta not equal to zero and the left hand side is simply the dot product of vector A and vector B. So we can write, we can write A dot B not equal to zero. So this is the case when vector A and vector B are not independent. They will interfere each other and in that case the dot product the dot product or the scalar a scalar product is not equal to zero but if we have another vector let's say vector c the pink one is vector c then in this case you can see the projection is a null vector if you put a light here if you put a bulb here then you can see the shadow is like a point so we can say that the vector is a null vector and the value of null vector is zero so the projection is zero on vector b and also theta is equal to 90 degree and cos 90 is equal to zero so the dot product of vector b and vector c is equal to zero and in this case when dot product is equal to zero vector C and vector B are independent. They will not interfere each other. 
so we have some idea about the mathematical relation between two vectors to be independent the dot product of two vectors must be zero and the dot product is a type of inner product and in case of signal space in case of signal space the typical inner product is definite integral the inner product is the definite integral so if we have two signals let's say the two signals are x1 t and x2 t and they are orthogonal if integration from minus infinity to plus infinity x1 t x2 t dt is equal to zero and this condition is for non-periodic signals if x1 t and x2 t are non-periodic then we will use this condition to find out whether they are orthogonal or not let's see the condition for periodic signals we have to integrate from 0 to t x1 t x2 t dt and if this integration is equal to 0 then we will say signal x1 t and x2 t are orthogonal signals this is the condition for periodic signals we are integrating in one time period t is the time period now the next part of this lecture is properties of orthogonal signals properties of orthogonal signals we will talk about four properties and these properties are very very important in the first property two harmonics of different frequencies are always orthogonal I will write this down two harmonics of different frequencies are always always orthogonal I will represent orthogonal by bold O and let's say the first signal is x1 t it is equal to sine n omega naught t plus phi 1 phi 1 is the phase difference the second signal is x2 t and it is equal to sine m omega naught t plus phi 2 and if we compare the two signals you can see the phase is different and also the frequencies n is not equal to m so we have two harmonics with different frequencies and if you integrate if you integrate from 0 to t because x1 t and x2 t are periodic signals x1 t is sine n omega naught t plus phi 1 second signal is sine m omega naught t plus phi 2 after performing the integration and putting the upper and lower limits you will find it is equal to zero and the condition of orthogonality is satisfied now we will move to the second property in second property sine and cosine functions with same phase and same frequencies are orthogonal I will write this down sine and cosine functions with same same phase and same frequencies are orthogonal this means if we integrate sine n omega naught t plus phi multiplied with cos n omega naught t plus phi from 0 to t we will have 0 you can see frequencies are same and also the phase so this is all for the property number two let's move to the third property in the third property we have DC value and sine function DC value and sine function are also orthogonal DC value and sine function are also orthogonal this means if I integrate from 0 to t and let's say the DC value is a small a sine n omega naught t plus phi then it will be equal to 0 
so the condition of orthogonality is satisfied when we have DC value and sine function as the two signals the last property is the most important property and most of the numerical problems are based on the fourth property in this property we will talk about effects of orthogonality on total energy and average power calculations if we have two signals x1t and x2t and these two signals are orthogonal this means integration from 0 to t in case of periodic signals and from minus infinity to infinity in case of non periodic signals x1t x2t dt is equal to 0 and we have another signal yt which is equal to sum of these two signals x1t plus x2t then the average power the average power py of this signal is equal to sum of average powers of signal x1t and signal x2t let's say the average power of signal x1t is p subscript x1 and average power of signal x2t is p subscript x2 so py the average power of signal yt is equal to px1 plus px2 and we can use this directly if x1t and x2t are orthogonal signals let's talk about the total energy the total energy ey of signal yt is equal to the total energy of signal x1 plus the total energy of signal x2 these two equations are true only when x1t and x2t are orthogonal there is one more point regarding the two equations py equal to px1 plus px2 if x1t and x2t are power signals x1t and x2t are power signals ey is equal to ex1 plus ex2 if x1t and x2t are energy signals now let's solve one example to understand how to find out average power and total energy using the properties of orthogonality let's move to the example in this example signal yt is equal to 2 sine 2 sine 3 omega naught t plus 45 degree plus 4 sine 4 omega naught t plus 35 degree and we have to find the average power and total energy of signal yt first thing is to find out whether signal x1t and x2t are orthogonal or not signal x1t is equal to 2 sine 3 omega naught t plus 45 degree and signal x2t x2t is equal to 4 sine 4 omega naught t plus 35 degree you can see phase is different and also the frequencies are different and uh, in the first property in the first property I told you two harmonics of different frequencies are always orthogonal so we have the first case here we have two harmonics with different frequencies so x1t and x2t are orthogonal and the average power the average power py is equal to px1 plus px2 the total energy the total energy is equal to infinity because x1t and x2t are periodic and periodic signals are power signals and in case of power signals the total energy is equal to infinity so we have to calculate the average power the average power py which is equal to px1 plus px2 px1 is simply equal to 2 square divided by 2 plus px2 is equal to 4 square divided by 2 4 square divided by 2 when you solve this you will have 10 watts as the value of average power so this is the answer of the first example I hope you now understand how to find out average power and total energy of signal when it is equal to sum of two orthogonal signals 
and regarding the calculation of average power we have used the result we obtained in the earlier lectures if we have a naught sine n omega naught t plus phi then the average power is equal to a naught square divided by 2 we have used this result to find out average power so this is all for this lecture in the coming presentations we will solve few more examples based on orthogonal signals it is little bit confusing topic but if you understand it once you will have no problem so i will end this lecture here see you in the next one